Okay, so we are going to learn how to use the eyeball bending die to make accurate bends, predictable bends. So here's this part. We can call it a handle if you'd like. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is uh, grab the material that I'm you know, intending to turn into my handle, and I'm going to make a drawing, an accurate drawing of what it's uh, supposed to look like dimensionally. I want it to be square, you know, two square bends, and so I'm using a, um, a framing square here, and I'm using a Sharpie to lay it out. Uh, it'll be good enough for this particular operation, but I recommend uh, that you use something more accurate like a pencil, uh, you know, a nice sharp pencil and something that you can erase with. I'm using a Sharpie because it shows up well uh, when filming uh, so that you guys can see it, uh, you know, through the camera a little easier. Notice I'm also using the actual material that I intend on bending uh, to account for the thickness as well. So I'm going around those lines, you know, I measured out the, uh, the inside uh, portion of the bend that I wanted and now I'm uh, tracing the thickness of the material around uh, as well just rolling my my part on the uh, on the drawing and getting it the way uh, I need it and then I'm also going to incorporate a cut line so uh, I want the handle to be a certain depth and so I'm just tracing that on there too just a little dotted line and uh, and that'll allow me to uh, predict where the bends are going to start and end as well as where to cut that last uh, bend down to and I'm labeling it as a cut line so that'll work well um, next step is going to be uh, setting up the bender so we're going to use the eye bolt bending die you can use that manual up in the uh, upper left there um, and then I've got the center pin the uh, offset pin uh, I believe they call that the eye pin over there, and then there's the bending dog, the funny one with the nut on the end, and then I've got two U-pins out, however, I'm likely going to use that one that takes the roller uh, as well. So next, you got to take those pins over to the bender and set them up. I've already got the center pin in. I'm uh, inserting that U-pin with the roller. It's important that your material be able to roll past that roller, and the bending dog is what grabs the part, and that what that's what makes... Uh, you know, these bends more predictable is knowing where the part's going to stick and where it's going to, uh, you know, feed in from. So then we put in that offset pin and then the bending dog, you know, thread that nut on if it isn't already. Uh, so here we've got that nut threaded on and the, and the, the bending dog sort of uh, bites into the material. And so what we're going to do is then um, our adjustability is, is, uh, is achieved using that eye pin and so we're going to drop that in like so. So mimic uh, this setup if you're using the same material. I'm using uh, five, I believe it's five sixteenths round bar. So uh, cutting down a sample piece now is going to be important doing a test bend. So I'm going to use this diacro. I'm going to make my life a little easy. I'm going to use a predictable dimension setting my combo to four inches and measuring to the center of that that diacro where those two plates meet and then here I have a nice uh, four inch part and sure enough it came out just where the combo square set it so that's going to make life a little bit easier uh, I'm also going to put a witness mark now somewhere easy for myself right at one inch is what I'm uh, putting it down it's not super critical that you make these uh, early earlier dimensions like I just you know it's a good habit to have some predictable uh, dimensions to draw from then I'm going to insert it into the uh, bending setup with the nose of that bending dog right on my witness mark and then pull a test bend. So this test bend is intended to be, you know, real accurate. Uh, so I'm going to, um, you know, try and pull that bend uh, using the mark that I just made right where the bending dog is. However, look at this. I've, uh, I've overbent it. It's a little bit uh, too tight, a little too acute. And so um, I'm going to take it over to the anvil. There's a, there's a way to correct uh, a bend that's a little overbent. So I'm going to lay my part over the horn of the anvil. You could use a, use a piece of pipe too, and then I'm going to give it a tap right on the crown of the bend, and that's going to allow me to open the bend a little bit more. It's always easier to tighten a bend up by just putting it back in the bender and, and pulling that arm a little further, but opening a bend can be a little tricky. So here's how you, how you uh, achieve that. So on this round bar, you just kind of uh, put it over the horn of the anvil and give it a give it a good uh, tap here and there and with a little bit of experience you'll dial it in. So now it's looking a lot closer to 90 good enough for what I'm doing. Now I'm going to lay that test bend right on top of my drawing. Um, there's no confusion. 
uh, because I've drawn in thicknesses now too. And now I'm going to lay my part on the cut line, my new part on the cut line, and transfer over the witness mark. Then I take my material back over to the bender, line up my witness mark nice and carefully, try and dial in all the little, you know, parts back to where they were for that test bend um, exactly as I had them before and you know take your time with this and uh, you can see that I'm you know applying the same amount of pressure and now this time uh, when I'm pulling my bend I'm gonna have my square handy so that I don't over bend it there is a way that you can set up a stop on the bender too but uh, for just this one handle I figured I'd, uh, I'd leave the, the bending stop off so you can see I under bent it there and so I just give it another little tweak with the handle until I dial it in get it right onto that 90 degree mark which is what I'm looking for bring the part back over to my drawing and sure enough uh, I've got my part right on that cut line I don't have to trim that side of the handle so that saves a good bit of work now what I'll do is lay that test bend back on my part line it up with the cut line although that's not too critical we're gonna cut it up to size and then I'm gonna transfer that that witness mark this time is what's more critical here line up that witness mark on the inside of the bend it's important to know where your bend is gonna stick and where it's gonna pull from so in this instance I know that I'm gonna pull around that corner and so I put it on the inside of the handle and now as I pull that bend it's gonna feed that material and that's where the extra part of the material is gonna go out towards the other end of the handle now I'm also dialing in it's it's really important to kind of dial in the level at which your you know your part sits so that it doesn't come out too twisted so I'm taking my time here to clock that part so that it is you know the piece that's already bent is uh, horizontal with the floor so it doesn't come out too twisted round bar is pretty tricky though uh, so we may have some corrections to do later I'm gonna pull that bin bend when I'm uh, satisfied with how it's sitting in there and uh, we'll check it again to make sure it's it's nice and 90 so I've got my combo square handy again and it looks like it needs a little bit more bending. Give it another little touch with the handle. And there you go. We have a, a nice 90 degree part. I'm gonna bring it back over to my drawing and this time I've got that extra material there and I'm gonna to need to trim it off. So you've got two options. You can just mark it like I'm gonna do here and then cut along that line using, you know, hacksaw, cutoff wheel, whatever you've got handy. Or, since this is round bar and it's a large enough leg on that bend, I'm going to basically set my combination square to the outside of the bend and then set it to my other cut line, bring it over to the diacro uh, cutter here and measure to the center, you know, where those two plates meet, where the, the cutting surface is, and then give the handle a good tug and that round part cuts real easy in that diacro bender and sure enough here it is you know cut right to length for me uh, right where I needed it to be so good little trick there with round bar issue though is look at that even though I tried really hard it's got a little twist in it easy way to fix that though we're gonna use a twisting wrench uh, often used over in the forge area to make twists I'm gonna place my part the vise as you see here and then uh, use the twisting wrench on the top there. I'm just going to adjust it so that it grabs my material on either side. Careful for it not to slip over the round bar and give it a twist in the direction uh, that I need to correct it in. Uh, best to use a twisting wrench so that you're applying equal force on either part, you know, either side of your part, and that'll allow that to line up better and you won't be fighting other weird forces. So don't use a, a standard you know adjustable wrench for that now you can see that the part is sitting a lot more flat than it was before and so that's uh, that's a good part so that's uh, a keeper so you can apply this to a lot of different um, bending setups on the Haasfeld just knowing where to put that witness mark use a test bend and then uh, use a drawing and uh, and you'll have a lot of success